In this video, I'm going to discuss two topics. Selecting a bullet that's suitable for deer hunting and what you should expect that bullet to do and how it should perform on your deer. The other topic I'm going to discuss is uh, shot placement. Another critical uh, part of deer hunting and deer management. So we'll start off with a suitable bullet. So you have your rifle, you have your scope, and now you're choosing ammunition to go hunt deer. There's a huge selection of ammunition available to the hunter today. So it's important that you choose one that's designed specifically for deer hunting. You need a bullet that is consistent that will have good weight retention and preferably exit on your animal after you've taken the shot. And there's reasons for this. You should look at the bullet and most boxes now will display, most of the American ammunitions manufacturer will, di will display what the bullet is suitable for. I see Federal have a white-tailed deer on their deer hunting ammunition and uh, they do then for varmints to do have a prairie dog and some ammunitions manufacturers specifically say varmint ammunition so that's good and it narrows down the search for the correct bullet that you're looking for as a deer hunter. So the bullet you need needs to be as I say consistent have good weight retention and exit. Be it soft point or ballistic tip, that doesn't matter. It's all about the construction of the bullet. Flat based, bow tail, again, it's irrelevant. As long as the bullet does controlled expansion and exits your animal, you have a good bullet. So with a proper bullet, this bullet, what you expect from this bullet is this bullet Upon impact, and the first thing that bullet will encounter is deer hair, it will pass through the deer hair. Next, it will hit the skin of the deer, which is quite tough. That will start the process of the mushrooming of the bullet, the expansion of the bullet. This is already starting to send a shock through our deer's body, our deer carcass. Then the next thing that bullet will encounter is fat tissue and muscle which is be no bother for a bullet to penetrate that but if it hits a rib or shoulder and that you still need that bullet to stay together so you still need that bullet to have good weight retention you need that bullet to be at this point halfway through the carcass to be well mushroomed and doing quite a considerable amount of damage inside say the deer's chest cavity we're talking the chest shot here then when it passes through be it heart lungs that it when it reaches the far side it has mushroomed almost completely and then we want that bullet to exit three or four times the diameter of the entrance wound and there's two reasons why we want this bullet to do that Inside the deer's chest cavity is like a vacuum, a vacuum of air. The lungs are inside and the heart are inside the chest cavity. And at the back, you have the diaphragm separating the green offal from this area, the stomach, the intestines. So the diaphragm is a muscle that contracts and allows the deer to breathe up and down and that's the lungs performing and doing their job of allowing the animal to breed. So if you pass a bullet straight through the lungs on a classic broadside shot, if that bullet enters, mushrooms, expands, passes through the first lung, then passes through the second lung and exits three or four times the diameter of the entrance wound, you get what's called a sucking or a vacuum wound. So when the diaphragm moves for the deer to take a breath, 
the lungs will actually collapse. This will cause our deer to rapidly expire. And this is the aim of us stalkers, is to humanely kill deer and kill them as quickly and as efficiently and humanely as possible. So that's why we need well-constructed bullets. So, as I say, as long as it's a controlled expansion bullet that you that will enter and exit your deer, that's what we want. Another benefit of your round exiting your deer is when you come across where you the deer was sitting at the shot, you will get a reading from the shot sight. That shot sight will indicate to you. Uh, what's actually going on or what's happening. Uh, if you look on the ground, there'll be hair. There could be blood, red blood, dark blood. There could be pink foamy blood, indicating the lungs have been taken out and blown out. All these are very important. And then you'll get a blood trail to your animal, which should be quite easy to follow after giving it 10, 15 minutes to expire if it's not in sight. So the bullet that you select for deer hunting should be a controlled expansion bullet. As I say, a soft point ballistic tip, that doesn't matter. I'm not going to get into the caliber debate because I'll be here all night and I'll probably rub people up the wrong way. But no matter what caliber you have, choose a bullet with controlled expansion and a bullet that you think will enter and exit your animal. Now I'm going to just briefly mention the bullets to avoid. The first bullet you need to avoid is the target type bullet. These could be full metal jackets or non-expanding hollow points such as the Lapua Sinar and then you have full metal jacket bullets. They are strictly for target shooting. In other words punching paper on a range. So that's where these bullets belong. They do not belong near your stalking rifle on a hunt as they are not suitable and they're not designed for this. Even if they're hollow point, they're non-expanding hollow points. They're not designed for hunting. The other bullet to be avoided in deer hunting is varmint bullets or fragile rapid expansion bullets. These bullets are designed for foxes, coyotes, prairie dogs, varminting and that and they're going super fast and the reason they're going super fast and they're frangible bullets because they're hitting a small animal and they want to do massive impact damage and usually this is out in wide open spaces so they don't want ricochets so that's why they use a very light frangible rapid expansion bullet. These are not suitable for deer hunting and are to be avoided. If you were to take the shot I just mentioned, would say, I'll just pick a caliber, 243, 58 grain, varmint or bullet. That bullet will almost certainly, when it reaches the skin, will have maximum damage and opened up nearly completely. While it might take out one lung, but you'll have no exit wound, leaving the other lung going. That deer can go a considerable distance before it expires. So at all costs, avoid target ammunition and varminting ammunition. And that's so the bullet you need is a controlled expansion round of suitable weight that preferably will enter and exit your animal. And this will give the desired effect of stalkers require while humanely taking our deer species. The next subject I'll be bringing up will be shot placement. So we'll talk about shot placement next. Now I'm going to talk about shot placement and correct bullet placement. Now that we spoke earlier about the correct 
style of bullet and what we require from our munitions and how they're to perform. Let's talk about where that shot should be placed and let's see how deer react to certain shot placements. The preferred shot is the heart lung area. For those legends that are out there that say they head and neck everything they shoot and if they miss then they miss cleanly. My opinion on this absolute crap. Bull. Fairy tales. I know I'll be getting things in from people saying I neck and head them all. I've been doing it for years. This is the way I hunt. Over your period of hunting you have unknowingly probably wounded and killed a lot of deer. If you go for a neck shot on a deer the target is about the size of a ping pong ball. If you go for a head shot on a deer that target is roughly the size of a tennis ball. And I've witnessed an awful lot of people shooting and there's very few people that can shoot consistently into targets of that diameter. So what can go wrong on a headshot is you can take the nose, blow the jaw, cut the muscles at the back of the head, causing a droopy head, which I've often encountered out in the field, take an antler off, take an eye socket out and the deer still stays going. All these things are things that can go wrong with the headshot. The neck shot is even a more difficult shot. While the neck appears to be quite a wide target, the vertebrae is what you need to be hitting to get that dramatic, dramatic effect of total collapse. And the vertebrae is only maybe an inch, an inch and a half wide and that. And if you don't hit the vertebrae, what has happened, the man that says he cleanly missed, that bullet could have perforated the windpipe, causing great difficulty and a prolonged death to the deer, the food pipe, or cut all the muscles on the back of the neck, causing a droopy head and great uncomfort and pain and unnecessary uh, for the deer to endure. Shoot to your abilities. If you can constantly do it on paper, in a hunting situation, that might entitle you to be taking these shots. But for a vast majority of the stalkers out there, they should limit themselves to their ability. And I'm not going to tell anyone what their ability is. Everyone deep down knows what they're capable of doing and to do it consistently. So if you can put up a ping pong ball at 100 metres and hit a tree out of tree, fair play to you. That's good shooting. If you can hit a tennis ball tree out of tree at 100 metres, again, that's good shooting. Fair play to you. But there's not a lot of people out there that can consistently do this. And it takes an awful lot of practice with your rifle to achieve this level of skill. And most of us are recreational stalkers, meaning we pick up rifles come season and we go for a wander and we hope to get a deer. A lot of us don't practice uh, during uh, the closed season and it might take out and fire one or two shots just before the season starts to check or zero and then go and pursue the deer. So I'm going to show you firstly a neck shot and as you can see it's quite spectacularly and it falls straight down but this was in a a very controlled environment and again I knew what I was doing. Uh, I personally don't head and neck all deer. That's, um, that's not what I'm about. If I think there's any chance of causing injury or that deer is going to escape wounded, I will not take unnecessary risk and risk 
having a deer turn up somewhere on a property looking all disheveled and in a poor state due to my poor choices of shot placement. So we'll firstly look at the next shot and you'll see here it's quite dramatic and quite humane and is taken down at an instant. As you can see, that was quite dramatic and very humane. But the range was quite moderate and I was in a controlled environment and I had a good support arrest to take that shot. And you could see the neck snapping and death was instant. So what I'm saying is here, neck shooting should only be done at moderate ranges when you're absolutely 100% of shot placement and before you ever attempt such shots three things practice practice and practice the next shot I want to speak about is the heart shot the heart shot can be quite dramatic Nine out of ten times a deer will run after a hard shot has taken place. 100% that deer will die and he'll die quite rapid from internal hemorrhaging. The bullet will enter, destroy the heart and exit. The deer's reaction to this shot will be a lep forward or a lep up in the air and a quite speedy gallop away. But he'll not go far. And if the heart has been hit, the spray and the blood trail, when you come to the shot site, should be quite spectacular and should bring you to the location of your deer carcass quite rapidly. Um, but to be honest, most heart shots that take place are actually accidents. <laughs> what I mean by accidents, it's people taking chest shots and the bullet it just happened to be a bit lower and hit the heart area. And then it's a heart shot because the heart is actually lying quite low in the chest cavity. So very rare, I would aim specifically at the heart um i generally aim to take out both lungs as this rapidly expires the deer with the lungs collapsing when the bullet exits causing a vacuum or a sucking bullet wound causing the lungs to collapse so most hard shots can be quite dramatic and it is a humane shot but generally happens, if truth be told, when you're going for a heart, lung shot or into the chest area of a deer. So we'll take a look now at a heart lung shot on a row of deer I did a number of years back. And or actually it was Mark, Mark, a good friend of mine from the UK, took this shot when we produced our first um, hunting video. Uh, a few years back so it's a clip from that and you'll see the reaction of the row and as I say again it's quite spectacular um, viewer discretion is advised so we'll take a look at that now Surely I 
as I said, hard shots can be quite dramatic and that was very dramatic. And in fairness to Mark, he placed that bullet correctly and very well. It was a decent shot. By memory, it was around the 200 yard mark. Um, but the deer was well dead by the time we went to go up and collect it. So that's the reaction for typical or fairly typical reaction to a hard shot. The next shot I'm going to speak about is the chest, the lungs. The shot I highly recommend, especially for those new or just starting their stalking career. Um, again, I'm going to take you back to England where I take this shot. It's actually in the same location as Mark had taken his. Um, and we're going to uh, see the reaction of uh, a chest shot through the lungs at around the 200 yard mark. It's quite instant and humane and that. But they can run on lung shots, but generally if you take out both lungs on a broadside shot, they never go far and um, they expire quite rapidly. So um, we'll take a look at, uh, at that shot and see what you think of it. The next shot I want to talk about is the head shot. The head shot is totally, totally controversial all over the world. Um, you can use the excuse you want to save all the meat and you want it humanely, but a lot can go wrong on a head shot. And it should be taken, if at all, very moderate ranges and definitely a supported, well supported shot. But it's not a shot I recommend. Your target is about the size of a tennis ball. And you need to be well inside that circumference to have a, a humane uh, kill on a deer. Um, moderate ranges, a very accurate rifle and really should be left to professionals or those with loads of experience and those that have had a lot of practice and that. And if it's on a trophy, you should never, ever attempt a headshot as it will damage your trophy. The bullet will mushroom and expand inside the head and you could end up with a floppy antler and your trophy could be ruined. So headshots is a very difficult and risky shot and should be taken at very close range or in the humane dispatch of a deer um, and that. So you, you need to really consider pulling the trigger if a head is presented to you. You really need to say, do I have to do it? Am I 100% sure that my shot is going to go where I intend it to go? And that. But anyway, again, we'll take a look at a headshot and uh, the reaction to a headshot when placed correctly. It's uh, quite instant. And again, this was in a controlled environment and I was well supported and had a very accurate rifle. So we'll take a look at it. So there we had um, a headshot being taken. As you can see, it was quite uh, instant and the deer fell and collapsed instantly. Uh, with total shutdown. 
neck shooting, head shooting of deer should only be left to the very experienced stalkers out there. The footage you've seen of head and neck shots was in a controlled environment and the rifle was supported and I had an extremely accurate rifle. And I'm culling deer quite a long time, both recreationally and professionally on deer farms and parks and such. So I've 30 years behind me and I definitely think before I pull the trigger on a headshot or a neck shot. So this isn't the kind of shooting I recommend. Um, you've seen in the clips that the uh, lung shot is very effective. Total collapse on a row and I've seen same results on fallow and Sika with good bullets properly placed, taking out both lungs and exiting, you'll, you'll, you'll get a good result. And there's a margin for error. There's no margin whatsoever for error in head and neck shooting deer. There's no margin for error. There's no clean misses. You can cut windpipes, tracheas, take off noses, break jaws, cut muscles on the back of the neck, giving the deer a droopy neck, causing a long lingering death for the deer, which none of us want. So I hope you found this clip informative and useful. Uh, so that's the results of uh, shot placement. Another thing to consider is angles. The angles, uh, rarely is a deer totally broadside and you'll have to consider the passage of that bullet going through the deer's uh, carcass. You want it going through the vitals. You want to avoid the green offal. So a lot of thought should go into squeezing off that shot to make a humane kill and uh, get a carcass that is both edible, hygienic and not contaminated. So again, to learn this is just practice, practice, practice and practice. I wish you all a, a safe uh, passage through these difficult times and to all the legends that will be getting on to me after this clip saying they head and neck every deer and they like light fast bullets as they fly like lasers. We're not representing the sport correctly. Use the most suitable caliber for the game you pursue. Use the correct munitions for the game you pursue. Practice constantly. Think before you pull the trigger. And if you decide to go and get target turrets or BDC bullet drop compensator on your scope, this does not turn you into a sniper. This does not mean you can shoot at further distances. The only time you'll be able to shoot at further distances after a lot of practice at any given distance. And remember, we're all in it to stalk deer. And stalking means getting as close as possible. That's the challenge and that's half the fun. So everyone be safe. Hope you found this clip informative and useful. And uh, I certainly enjoyed putting it together. Thanks very much and see you all soon at upcoming events and maybe game fairs next year. Thanks for viewing.